Hello everyone, this is a wonderful, wonderful day. This is the second day of January in the year 2020. God has blessed us to cross over into a new decade, a new year. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Happy New Year to everybody again. Happy New Year to you. 2020 is here. We are blessed to be alive. Blessed to have our reasonable portion of health and strength. We are blessed, blessed, blessed. I am so thankful to God for everything. The Sunday school lesson that I posted last year, in 2019, last year, for the last Sunday of 2019, is the same lesson for the first Sunday in 2020. So I will re uh, re do that Sunday school lesson, but I am going to do the 90th Psalm today, a message, the 90th Psalm. And this uh, one verse is uh, in the Bible Gateway Daily Reading, and I believe I've already posted that today, but I'm going to do the whole 90th Psalm, and we'll go from there. In the name of the Lord, this is a message, and it's a great message. It's a great message, and I said, this is a a, a psalm is it a prayer of Moses. It said Moses taught the people to pray. Moses was a prophet. He was a, known as the man of God. He led the children out of Israel. So they said this is a prayer of Moses, okay? And it said that it's preserved. It's preserved. So a little history on it, preserved from Moses' time till the collection of the psalms was begun to be made. And it, they say it's uncertain, though, you know, so they're speculating and they're trying to chase that history down of why it took so long for it to come out. But they say this is the prayer of Moses. So he taught the people of Israel to pray and he put words into their mouths, which they might make use of and turn it to the Lord. And they say he's called a man of God, which I've already said. He's, and uh, so to give God the praise. To give God the praise, of uh, the care concerning the people at all times and concerning us in our days. Okay, so this prayer is good for all of us. It's good for all of us. And I'm so thankful. I cannot say I'm thankful. I cannot say it enough, okay, because it's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to come to you through the world wide web. So, Lord. Thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. This is the 90th Psalm. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever had, thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. And remember they're saying that this is a prayer of Moses, okay? Now, thou carest, or carriest, excuse me, them away as with the flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. For as we are, for we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. And so I go back to age, which tells us I, I did not pronounce that thy, I said thou, okay? Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. 
Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. And so, you know, we, we do so much, even in this day and time. We do so much. It could be out of selfishness. It could be out of foolishness. It could be a mistake or a mistake, if you want to put it like that. We do so much. God is so patient with us, and he warns us from time to time, from day to day, okay, you're not supposed to do this. If you do this, I'm going to have to punish you. I've laid the guidelines. I've set the word before you. I sent my son to teach you how to live. I sent my son so that you will have a right to the tree of life. He laid the foundations. He opened up the way. What more could I do? I tell you over and over and over and over, this is not right. This is right. This is right. That's not right. If you do this, you're going to have to suffer the consequences. So, just do what I say do and live according to my will. Yet God knows that we, in our human form, our humanity, we are going to mess up sometimes. That's why he has given us grace, mercy, compassion. But to do it over and over and over and over and over and over again, what is he supposed to do when he's told us, okay, you did it the first time. You've asked me to forgive you. Okay. You did it the second time. Okay, I'm going to forgive you this time. You did it the third time. I'll forgive you, but there are consequences. And that's where we are today. That's where we are today. God loves us so much. He wants us to do the right thing. He wants us to follow his commandments. That's what God wants. But yet, if we don't and we continue in sin, there are consequences. There are consequences. But yet, at the end of this life, Jesus Christ, let me go back, came to this earth voluntarily to live here, have a human body. He stayed 33 years to teach us the way of righteousness. To let us know that in our human form, in our human bodies, in this flesh, with the blood running in our veins, in this skin, these bones, this frame, I came down here. I have this body, the human body. I have the bones. I bleed. I have the emotional uh, thinking that you have. I feel what you feel. I feel what you feel. So I know that you can live the life because I've come in human form to let you know that it's possible. And what I did for you and saying to the people back then, I have come 
that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I am going to lay down my life for you, but I'm going to rise up again in victory. And I will have victory over sin and death, over shame, over humiliation. The victory is in Jesus. The possibility of being saved and sanctified and filled with the Spirit of God. He did that when he came down here. So now, back in Moses' days, he was praying for the people. The people were messing up just like we do today. Jesus Christ had not come, but we know that God is Jesus Christ, so he was there all the time. Okay? So Elder Davis would say to us, he said, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So today we're in the Old Testament, which conceals the New Testament, but yet God is in every testament. Because this is the testimony, okay? Oh, yes. So, he said, Thou turnest man to destruction, and says, Return, ye children of men, and I will get over into that. So, thou carry, carriest them away as with the flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. For we are consumed by thine anger. And that's where I was when I was just talking about the compassion and mercy and everything. How we mess up so much and God yet has compassion on us. He forgives us. But then he'll forgive us. But then many times we have to suffer the consequences. Because he's warned us over and over and over again. So let's use these brain cells that he has given us. Let's use them and say, okay. Now he blessed me to get through that. So I'm not going to be foolish enough and yield to the temptation that comes to get back into that. Because I might not, literally, I might not survive it. So therefore, if I'm in sin... And I'm consumed in that sin and while I'm in that sin. So that means that I have lost my life and I have lost a chance to live with God throughout eternity. So we want to be careful. He has compassion. He's talking to Moses. This is Moses' prayer. So thou has set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. So iniquities, they say, are hidden sins, or secret sins. They're sins that we know about that nobody else knows about but God and us. He set those before them. He set those before him. He sees them. He knows our secret sins. So that's why we have a chance right now. If you have not asked for forgiveness, you can ask God to forgive you of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior right now. You can do it, all right? Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. God is looking at our iniquities. He's seeing them. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. My goodness. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, that's seventy years, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, eighty years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. After all of this, then We've lived a rough life. I'm gonna I'm, let me just go ahead and do this, okay? Do the scripture. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days. That's the focal scripture. Teach us, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Oh, satisfy us early and with early. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, 
and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto thy children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. And there's so much here in the commentary. And it tells us that you know, God is forever with us. He sees what we're doing. He knows what we're doing. He's watching over us. He's giving us a chance to repent or giving us a chance not to do that thing that's against his will. Okay? He's giving us those chances to give God the glory of his eternity need before mountains were brought forth, before he made the highest part of the dust of the world. We can find that in Proverbs uh 8 verse 26 before the earth fell in travail or as we may read it before thou hast formed the earth and the world that is before the beginning of time thou hast a being even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God an eternal God whose existence has neither its commencement nor its period with time nor is measured by the successions and revolutions of it, but who art the same yesterday, today, and forever, without beginning of days, or end of life, or change of time. He's just here. He's omnipresent. He's forever present. No beginning and no end. He's present. Always has been, always will be. That's the God that we serve now. To own God's absolute sovereign dominion over man and his irresistible and contestable power to dispose of him as he pleases. That's the third, talking about the third verse, thou turnest man to destruction. These are words speaking when thou uh, pleasest to the destruction of the body of the earthly house and thou sayest return children of men. So the, the number one uh, part there is when God is by sickness or other afflictions turning men to destruction, he does thereby call men to return unto him. That is to repent of their sins and live a new life. Now, this God speaketh once, yea, twice, return unto me from whom you have revolted. He just said, come on back to me. Come on back to me. I see you. I will hear your prayer of repentance. Just come back to me. Let me restore you. Because as uh, Job was saying, uh, we have a few days and they're full of trouble on this earth. But God wants us to have a happy life he wants us to be happy because of things that happened even before we came with, with uh, Eve and Adam in the Garden of Eden. And then that started everything that's happening now. They, had, they were not going to die, but since they sinned, and Adam gave in to Eve to taste the forbidden fruit. Then now we have the cycle of living and dying, living and dying. But then God wanted us to have a chance to live with him. So that's why he sent Jesus Christ. That's why he sent him here to teach us the way, to let us know, even though we have the prophets of the Old Testament, but Jesus Christ came and all of those sacrifices, the lambs, the bulls, the bullocks, the goats, and all the sheep, and all of that. That doesn't have to be anymore because Jesus is a sacrificial lamb. He did away with all of that when he came here. So all we have to do now, we don't have to go out and kill a, uh, a, sh a sheep or lamb or anything to get forgiveness. He has already been slain and he arose again. All we have to do is to ask God to forgive us in the name of Jesus and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. If we 
fall short of, we've all fallen short. So when we fall short of God's glory, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so all of the trouble that the Israelites went through, it was because of their own sins. God brought them out. They mumbled and grumbled and sinned and intermingled and married outside of the nation and all of that. Just did so many things that God had said don't do. But yet he had mercy on them just like he has mercy on us. Surely don't do that. If you do that, there are going to be consequences. I told you not to do that. Now, because you did that, you have to suffer the consequences. But Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, I ask you not to let me have to suffer. Okay, this time, this time, I'm going to let it pass you by. But don't do it again. Then I go and do it over again. God is a merciful God. He might even let me slide that time. But let me tell you, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man, woman, boy, girl soweth, that shall he, she also reap. And I know it's a man, but I just put the woman, boy, girl in there too. Because he mean, when he says man, he means all of us. So don't count God's, uh, his delay. Don't count it as slackness. He's giving us time to get it together. If you don't have it together, you need to get it together. These people, Moses was praying for these people. These people had had hard times. They'd been through changes. They had these secret sins. Their sins were up before God's face. And they could see that he knew them because of his countenance. This is what Moses was saying. They're there. We know that you see our secret sins. Lord, but in the end, in the last days, give us the peace that we used to have. Let us enjoy life again here on this earth. Let us enjoy it again. And so, you know what? We can enjoy our lives here in this world. And then when we transition, whether it's during the rapture or through death, when we transition, if we're living the life that God has set before us, we can have it all. We can have a happy, abundant, prosperous life right here. We know things happen. We know there's sickness. We know there's death. Those are inevitable. Those are inevitable in many, many cases and in different situations. It might not be you. might not be me. But there is a sickness. There is a death that affects us at times. Okay? So the people... Because they acted so bad, they saw the bad days, and they said, you know, we've had these days, but Lord, let us have some good times. In the end, let us see the good times again. And that's what I'm asking God to, you know, there's sadness, and I, I repeat this, sickness, there's death. There is hardship. There's so much going on in this world that we have to suffer through, have to live through. But yet, God is still watching over us. He's still looking at us. We have a few days of sorrow. But then he said in the scripture, teach us. To number our days. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Lord, let us be able to live our lives, learn to live our days and have our days to be more productive, good days. Let us live wisely. Teach us to do that that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom so that we will be able to know the way, know how to tell others this is the way. This is why we are so happy. We are so 
uh, prosperous and that could, prosperity could be in many ways, not just monetary ways, but in so many ways. Whatever your hands find to do, do it. Do it, do it as unto the Lord. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. He will give us the desires of our hearts if our ways please him. If we ask him and don't doubt, we can have what we ask him for. That's why I don't give up. I'm not in distress because what I have asked him for, I believe I'm going to get it. But I also say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. But God, if you see fit, let it be in your will. Because I know you can do anything. You can do anything. You can fix me if I need to be fixed. You can fix someone else if they need to be fixed. You can do that, God. You can make a way out of nowhere. You can make streams in the desert. You can do that, God. Whatever, whatever you want to do, you can do that, God, to make life better for me. You can do that, God. And you know what, God? I want my ways to please you so that when I do ask you, I can get what I ask you for in the name of Jesus. You said whatever we ask, don't doubt. And then what we have to cap it off with is in the name of Jesus. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. So, I'm going to go over here to, let me get to the, the bottom part of what I want to say about this scripture here. Okay. We get on down here, let me go do this. To see the frailty of man and his vanity, even at his best estate. And we're talking, this is Psalm 90, verses 5 and 6. We look upon all the children of men, and we shall see, number one, that their life is a dying life. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. That is, they are continually gliding down the stream of time into the ocean of eternity. The flood is continually flowing and they are carried away with it. As soon as we are born, we begin to die. And every day of our life carries us so much nearer, nearer death or we are carried away violently and irresistibly as with a flood of waters, as with an inundation which sweeps away all before it or as the old world was carried away with Noah's flood. Though God promised not to drown the world again, yet death is a constant deluge. Number two, that it is a dreaming life. And I'm talking about the end of the scriptures that tells us, you know, we've had these problems, we have problems all our lives, and Lord, help us out on this end, okay? It's a dreaming life. Men are carried away as with a flood, and yet they are as sleep, as asleep. They consider not their own frailty, nor are aware how near they approach to an awful eternity. Like men asleep, they imagine great things to themselves, to death wakes them and puts an end to the pleasing dream. Time passes unobserved by us as it does with men asleep, and when it is over, it says nothing, nothing. Number three, that it is a short and transient life, like that of the grass which grows up and flourishes. In the morning, it looks green and pleasant, but in the evening, the moor cuts it down and it immediately withers, changes its color, and loses all its beauty. My, my, my. Death will change us shortly, perhaps suddenly, and it is a great change that death will make with us in a little time. Man, in his prime, does but flourish as the grass, which is weak 
and low and tender and exposed and which when the winter of old age comes will wither of itself but he may be mown down by diseases or disaster as the grass is in the midst of summer all flesh is as grass so that tells us time is moving on our time is moving this is 2020 and even in our youngest days we couldn't imagine what 2020 would look like but here we are in 2020 and god has spared us but that means we're closer to death closer to eternity every millisecond we're closer to eternity so teach us, God, to number our days so that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom, so that we can be repentant, that we can have wisdom, that we can honor you, honor your glory, your majesty, that we can live a saved and sanctified life so that when you do come back, Jesus, in the air, then we will be able to transition those who have not already died a natural death. We shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And when we come before your judgment seat, God, then you can say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. That's going to be a great day. This is what this is all about. And this is the prayer of Moses. Lord, we're going through so many trials. We're going through so many troubles. So many tribulations. Many of them. And most all of them are our fault. And we know that things are inevitable. We know that death comes. We know that sickness comes. We know that poverty comes. We know that all of this comes, God. But yet, you are the head of our lives. You are in control, God. You have also promised us promised us that if our ways please you, you'll give us the desires of our hearts. And Lord, we look forward to that. And we stand on that with our most earnest faith in you. And God, we thank you. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is the prayer. And even though things are happening all around us, even in the midst of us, God is yet in control. He's teaching us to number our days. He's teaching us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Ask him to do that for you. Ask him to do that for you. I love you. This is the 90th Psalm. Hope that you have gotten something out of this because I have, and the more you see, the more I talk about it, the longer I talk. So, let me tell you this I'm going to sign off now. As Lord, teach us to number our days so we can apply it to wisdom, wisdom so that we can know more. Lord, teach us, He's been our dwelling place in our all generations from generation to generation he has been our dwelling place if it were not for the lord on our sides where would we be where would we be psalm 90 may the lord i pray that the lord will continually bless and keep you this is the second of january in the year 2020 i love you Enjoy, enjoy the remainder of your day. Two one, let me see, what is the number? 469-629-9543. GGT Church 66 at yahoo.com.